In this video, I'm going to show you how to build these barn doors. Okay, first thing we want to do is get some nice barn wood. This stuff actually came out of a barn that was built a couple miles uh, east of here and was built in the 1900s and stood till about 2019. So it's old and it's got beautiful old saw marks on it. And the first thing we want to do is grab our metal detector and go over this barn wood to make sure there's nothing hidden inside. When I take down the barns, I usually go through it all and make sure there's no nails. That's me just looking at it, pulling nails out. But you do get nails sometimes broken off on the inside. So I go over everything with this uh, Magic Garrett one, the same one that the airport security probes you with when you try to go somewhere on a trip. Okay, now we're not gonna have any surprises hitting nails in the planer. So I've got two doors to build. They're gonna be full pass-through, haunched, mortise, and tenon. And so my doors are 82 tall and 33 wide. My styles have to be the full 82 tall and my rails have to be the full 33. So I'm gonna cut these down now, just over the length of where they're going to be while I go through the planing and in case stuff chips off and stuff, I'm cutting everything a little bit long before we cut down to exact sizes. Okay, with all the boards cut to size, now we wanna try and preserve as much character as possible. Since there's no such thing as straight barn wood, and because I'm trying to preserve as much character as possible, meaning the saw marks and the age marks and stuff like that, I'm gonna carefully set my jointer to the lowest depth possible and find the side of the board that I think I can get the flattest while preserving the most amount of character. So I'm just gonna slowly pass it over and then keep looking at it until I get something that I can pass through the planer that has a uniform bottom and I can get my uniform thickness. Okay, so let me show you on this board. You can see that it's kind of cupped, and I'm gonna use this cupped side as the face that I want facing out on the door that's gonna preserve as much character as possible. And so I'm slowly gonna pass it over the jointer, and it's gonna take down these two sides until the point where I have um, a uniform flatness on these two sides so that when I go to flip it over under the planer and plane this backside off to thickness, I know that I'm gonna get a straight board. So we're dealing with crooked, weird, um, twisted boards and we're trying to get one side flat and off that flat side we'll build 90s and, and uniform thickness so that when we go to assemble our door everything fits together good. But at the same time we're trying to preserve as much character as possible. So it's finding that balance between nice square flat wood and preserving some of the character so that the hallmarks of a barn wood door are, are present. <laughs> Okay, now with three or four or five or whatever passes it was, now I have, if you look down the board, you can see that it's a flat board. And, and even though I have, it's lower in the middle, that's, that's not gonna mess up my joinery. So I want to have a nice joint on the two sides here and on the top sides, which we're gonna cut off afterwards. But I've got a flat surface, meaning when I go and place it down on the planer and it runs through, it's not running through all, all screwy so that the blades, when they come and engage on the top, they're gonna to take it off in a uniform manner and I can get a perfect thickness board. So I'm gonna stop right there. I'm still gonna clean this up and sand it, but essentially what's gonna end up happening is this is gonna be all the nice character and then I've got a nice uniform board to work with. So after this, I'm actually gonna join one side so that I know off of this front side, which is running against my fence, I'm now gonna get a 90. And then from there, I can go to the table saw to cut them to the right thickness and then, then plane down. There, and now I've got this board with one flat side and one 90. And off of that 90, I can rip this side to a, a uniform width. And off of this front side, I can plane it down to a uniform thickness. So I'll do that to all the boards, preserving as much character as I can, and then we can move on to the joinery steps. Okay, so I've got the one side all done and the second side squared up. So now I'm gonna flip over my uh, combo planer jointer unit here and plane them all down to the thickness that I want for, for the door. Okay, so I've got them all joined on one side, planed, so they're all the same thickness, and I've got one side joined in a nice 90 degree, and now I need to get my boards all the same width. So I'm gonna run it through on the table saw, and I want these to end up being five inches, but I'm gonna do them just over five inches. I'll cut them all, and then I'll run them through the planer standing vertically, and then I know I've got them all exactly the same uniform width. Okay, now I've just run these off the table saw and the reason that I'm now gonna run them through the planer is you can see that even though the table saw was set straight and I ran it through as good as I could, there's still like little variations in the board and the board might have just bent a little bit or twisted a little bit as it go was going through. So now I'm gonna run them through the planer like this so it takes them all down 
uh, nice and perfect, and all in reference to the bottom side, which I've already run through on the jointer, which I know is nice and flat. Okay, so now all this crooked, dirty barn wood is all straight and uniform and square, and we can move on to the next step. And what we want to do now is on the insides of these rails and styles, we're going to mortise out the center so that our um, panels will fit inside. Okay, now as with a lot of things in woodwork, there's a lot of ways to do a task. This is one way to mortise out the center of your boards. It, you use your router, and then there's a jig that I have on the bottom with mortising pins. And so what happens is you put it on top of your, your board. We want to cut out the center, and in this case, I don't have to do any math, any figuring, any calculations. You twist it until um, the two pins are, are snug against the board, and then you can plunge down and pull through, and it finds the center for you, as long as you've set your base on so that your bit is in the center. And so I've gone and set, I want this to go down, this mortise is going to go down three quarters of an inch, and I've got a three quarter inch bit inside of there. Um, and so I've set on the side of my router this depth stop that goes against this screw. It maxes out at three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to put the, the router on top, twist it till it finds the center, start to plunge in what I consider to be a reasonable amount, and then I'll go through the whole board, and then I'll just keep going over back and forth until I get to the, to the very bottom. And I can go through all my boards like that. Now usually on these boards I leave them all really long because you can tell that I'm not going to be able to reach all the way in and my first pin has to engage right there. If I'm not on then it won't center and so you don't make it all the way to either end. So usually I leave my boards longer and then that way I can router and mortise right through. But in this case the boards weren't quite long enough and so I'm going to end up with a little lip inside here that I'll have to clean out with a saw and a chisel afterwards which is fine. Now you can see here, I've mortised out that center and it makes really nice square edges. It's nice and square and uniform and centered all the way along there. I'll have to cut out this little piece at the end here. Okay, so the rails and styles are all joined and plain and cut and they're ready to go. They've got the mortises in them so that the side pieces are mortised all the way through. And then these are the top, bottom, and middle pieces. And the top and bottoms only have one side with it mortised out. And the middle ones have both sides mortised out. And that way when the panels go in, they obviously fit in the top and the bottom. Now I don't clean out these because I'm going to cut these out and make the, the long tenons that pass all the way through. So this is getting cut out anyways. But now I'm going to stop doing this for a second and I'm going to join and plane um, and glue up the panels that will go on the insides of these doors and we'll let them set overnight. And then tomorrow when I come and assemble all this, they'll be ready to go. Okay, so now we've got all these boards joined and planed and square on the edges and we can go and glue them up and this will be the four panels that are going inside the, the two doors. And I've done the best that I can to get level boards or, or uniform thickness boards and leave some of the character on what will end up being the front side of the door so we've got kind of maximum character. Okay, now it's glue up time and I'm going to set these boards in here and do a quick test clamp. And then we'll glue. I think everything's okay, but it's always a good idea to do a little quick test. Well, I've got a nice flat surface. All my joints look nice and tight and closed. So we'll go ahead and throw some glue on this. And then I've got three more of them to do. I'm going to let them sit overnight and they can go in the doors in the morning. Okay, so it's tomorrow now, and these are all dried and ready to go, so I'm gonna unclamp everything. I've cleaned the glue off the top last night before I left. Uh, I'll clean the bottom off, and then we'll run them through the dual drum sander to smooth them all out. I actually left them all just a tiny bit high. Like, I wanted them at three quarters of an inch, and I left them just, just a hair above that, so that if, if there was any irregularities or they moved a tiny bit, when I now go and pass them through the drum sander, I can level them all out just to the thickness that I want so they fit in the mortises that I made for the doors.
Now, before I run these through the drum sander, I'm gonna clean them all up. You see that I did the skip planing, but a lot of this is still kind of dirty and, and stuff like that. And so I'm gonna use an 80 grit sandpaper just to lightly go over everything and clean up all the saw marks and any le leftover glue so that I've got a smooth pass when I start putting them through the drum sander. Okay, now this is my big angry dual drum sander. It's big, it's green, and it's mean. Basically, it's got two rollers inside there. And don't do this because it's dangerous, but I'm gonna show you. Those two babies spin. I've got the back one set just a tiny bit lower than the front one. So they both just take off uh, a tiny little bit. I'm gonna run these through on the back side. I'm happy with the tops. I'm gonna flip them over and then plane them down or sand them down to thickness on, on the back side. Okay, so now we're gonna quickly double check that the size of my panels fits inside these slots that I made. There we go. That fits good, so we're done with those and we can now trim these up to the right size. Okay, so now it's time to trim these all down. It's, it's almost the right width and then I have to trim the top down. So my, I've got my fence sit here, set here on my slide saw. It runs perpendicular to my blade. I'm gonna square one side up and then off of that side, um, I've got my, my two stoppers set for, for the two, the, the height and the width, and I can trim these all up. Okay, so I've got this all nice and square now. I'll do the rest of them, and then we can move on to uh, some joinery on the styles and rails. Okay, so with our rails and styles all done, we now want to work on the joinery, which is going to be the haunched tenon pass-through tenons. So our styles, I'm gonna have to take to the, the chisel mortiser, and I'm gonna chisel mortise all the way through so the tenons will pass through. And on these rails, I've gotta make the tenons, and on the top and bottom, the little haunched piece that slides in, inside the mortise that prevents them from twisting a little bit. And there's a, a lot of ways to do that. I'm gonna show you a way with setting the depth on your slide miter saw, and then using a router to clean them out to get nice predictable tenons, and then we can move to assembly. Okay, and again, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is one way of doing it. So I've already gone and marked out where the, the shoulder of the rail is gonna be meeting up with the style. And so now I need to cut this out. And I know that I need to cut this amount out up until the edge of that mortise. And so on the side of my saw, I've got a depth gauge that I can set and then it, it goes down and will stop it. And so I set the depth so that my saw goes down and won't go any further than just above the place where I wanna cut out. So all I'm going to do is line up my line. I'm going to cut it through and pass through. And you have to have this board here in the back or else you don't get a straight cut all the way through. By the time you get to the back side of it, you end up with a bit, little bit of a lip. So this way you get a flat pass all the way through. After I've cut that, I know that's my shoulder. And then I'm going to take it over to the router setup to clean out all the rest of it. Okay, so this is a pretty simple setup here. I've got one of the boards that's the same height as the boards I'm trying to work with. And I'm gonna come and set it up against the side of it. I'm gonna clamp it down. And then on the bottom of my big router here, I have a giant piece of plexiglass. And what that allows me to do is I have more of a, more of a, a base and I can pass over and I can govern the depth of my, my router. And so I've got one wing on this side and obviously the board on this side and that holds up this piece of plexiglass. And so wherever I set the depth of my router, that allows me to get a uniform cut across the whole thing. So I'll do it in, a, in two or three passes, the very last pass kind of being the easiest one. And then I can clean out the whole top side of that tenon. I'll flip it over and do the bottom side. And then um, with just a router and a, and a saw, I've got my, my tenons ready. sneaking our way down until we get just to that line right there okay now we've just got this last little bit that I'll clean off okay now we'll flip this one over and cut off either side of the tin Now I still have to cut off these two top pieces here for the tenon but we're just going to check and make sure that it's fits right, because that's where it's sliding in. So I know my depth is set right, 
and uh, I can go ahead and make all these now and then we'll cut off these ends and make the haunch tenons on the upper and lower rails. Okay, now we're making the haunch tenon side right here. This side's already cut off where the panel's gonna fit inside. And then I've got a little three quarter by three quarter notch that has to sit on this side. So I've gone and ripped down as far as I can um, on this other side. Now I set my blade up three quarters of an inch and I set my distance to the fence and I'm gonna cut it off and then I'll finish trimming it with the saw and then it fits in like a charm. And now to test it, just to make sure I've got it the right depth, I'm gonna set it in this side here and then just make sure that my joint goes tight and it's hitting into the bottom. So we're good. Okay, with these all cut, now the last thing is, these are, as I mentioned, pass through. So they're gonna sit and pass in through, through here. So I'm, I'm gonna mark out where the, the full pass through mortises have to go and then use the uh, mortise chisel to chisel that out. So this one, is it has nothing on it except the, the, more, the tenon. And then this one has this haunch uh, tenon here on the end, which fits inside that slot and holds these boards nice and straight. Okay, so now this is one of the funnest machines to use. This is called a chisel mortise um, or a mortiser. And it's all set up so that you clamp your board in. And with these dials, you can move back and forth without having to unclamp and move your board. And inside this, this uh, chisel mortise is basically a drill bit and then this square chisel. And because I've done everything with a three quarter inch bit up till now, and this is a three quarter inch uh, chisel mortise, it's gonna fit just right down in that slot. So I'm gonna be able to go through and chisel out the, the exact width of all the boards that I've already cut and for the mortise that I've already cut. And so what I'm gonna do is set this in here and you'll see that I'll clamp it down and then I can move back and forth and I'll go and chisel through about halfway. Then I'll flip the board over and chisel out the bottom side so that they're full pass through. So, some guys won't do the full pass through. I just kind of like how it looks on the backside when you do it. You could just go out to a certain depth, set your depth stop and then go like three quarters of the way, for example, then leave it so you don't see the end grain on the outside of the, t of the door. I just like seeing it, so I do it. There, now you can see that it's hollowed out. I gotta go clean it out with a chisel there a little bit, but now we've got the full pass through at the depth of three quarters of an inch. Okay, so the pieces are all ready. We're gonna do a quick test fit to make sure it all fits and then we can assemble. Okay, quick review. You can see this haunch tenon right there is sitting right where it's supposed to. And the joints are nice and tight. We've got it all mortised out and they're all lining up real nice for our panels to fit in. And I left these sitting out. They kind of, they brought with it a little bit of junk, but I left them both sitting out proud so that I could sand them off afterwards. But yeah, pretty happy. We'll keep that. Okay, so now with all the pieces ready, uh, we're gonna assemble. So I've got some tight bond glue. I'll put it in all the joints. I'll put the three rails into the style that's closest to you. Then I'll slide my two panels in and then I'll put the top style on and then clamp it all together. Okay, so the doors are all glued and out of their clamps, and now I'm gonna go over the, the whole thing and do a clean up sand. So a lot of these areas I haven't cleaned up at all, and you can see they're still kind of uh, weathered and, and, and whatnot. So I'm gonna go over it and sand it just until it, it reveals a bunch of the character, but, but still gives me a flat surface to work off of. Then we've gotta trim all of these pass-through tenons. So I'm gonna use the jigsaw and then the sander to trim those flat. And then I'm gonna go and put in some uh, studs. Okay, now when we made these uh, tenons, we made them long and they're sticking outside of these styles. So I'm gonna come and trim them with the jigsaw and then sand them down flat.
Okay, now with these barn doors, there's a slot, there's a little uh, floor guide that goes on the floor that stops your door from swinging out. And there's a number of ways to cut the slot in the bottom. One of the quickest ways I've found is actually use a biscuit jointer. So I'm gonna go find the center with this centering scribe right here. I'll put my pencil inside, twist it, which makes it find the center. I'll make a line. And then the blade on my uh, biscuit jointer is just as wide as this guide. So to give it a little bit of room so it's not just rubbing on there tight, I'm gonna go a little bit above and a little bit below. So I'll do it in two passes. And then when I go mount this on the floor, uh, it'll slide on nice and easy. Okay, and then right here on the side of your biscuit joiner, that red line is the center line. So I'm gonna come and I'll loosen it off and then I can just set to where it's the center. Now I'm gonna do one cut that's a little bit above and one cut that's a little bit below. And then that way I've given myself enough room for the guide to slide on nice and easy. There, now you've got that nice slot in the bottom that that little guide can run along. Okay, and with that all done, now we're gonna put in some of these um, hammered steel studs. So they've just got a little nail on the bottom. I've gone and marked out the center on all of my rails. I'm just gonna go and do a little pre-drill and then hit them in with the rubber mallet. And they just, they're uh, just kind of a nice steel accent for this old barn wood. I still have to put the track wheels on. So the kit comes with a little guide. So you just center it, put it in your style, make your first mark. They want you to make two, but basically I make my first mark and then I bolt it in. And then I make my second mark using this deal itself. So I'll just push to the side, make the second hole, and then I can bolt it in. I'll clamp a board underneath so that I don't get much blowout on the bottom. And I use this Miles Craft a jig here to give my give me a nice straight up and down drill hole all the way through. Okay, that's a wrap on these doors. I'm still gonna put the floor guides on and the little deals up top. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna see a video about making castle joints, click here. If you wanna follow me, click here. And if you wanna see a video about making barn doors with the plywood and barnwood veneer method, click over here.